Cages, which, according to the media, are used by members of the Hezbollah group, are exploding en masse in Lebanon. According to preliminary data, the ambassador of Iran in Beirut, Mujtaba Amani, is among the hundreds of victims reports build. It is noted that dozens of devices that Hezbollah fighters use to communicate with each other exploded at the same time in Lebanon today. Outwardly, such devices resemble pages. It is noted that, according to preliminary data, about 100 people were injured. Reports of casualties from the explosions are coming from the southern suburbs of the capital Beirut and from the south of the country. In Hezbollah, they connect what happened with the actions of the Israeli special services, which allegedly managed to infiltrate the ranks of the terrorist organization and install explosive devices in the pages. Official Israel does not comment on what is happening. Sources of TV channel 12 in the Lebanese security forces said that the leadership of Hezbollah called on its fighters to temporarily not use the issued means of communication, the source writes. According to a source familiar with the situation who spoke to the Wall Street Journal, the exploding pages were from a new batch that Hezbollah received recently. A representative of the group revealed that hundreds of fighters possess such devices. He suggested that malware may have caused the overheating and explosions. Some members reported feeling the pages getting hot and disposed of them before they detonated. It remains unclear what triggered this series of explosions, but Lebanese authorities believe Israel is behind a cyber attack. The Lebanese Foreign Ministry characterized the blasts as a dangerous and deliberate Israeli escalation, claiming they were accompanied by Israeli threats to expand the war towards Lebanon on a large scale. In response, Israel has raised its alert level at all ports. Israeli security officials believe Hezbollah plans military action, prompting an urgent meeting of senior officers at the Defense Ministry to explore options for a possible northern escalation, noted the Israeli publication Haaretz. The Americans are not willing to see this conflict either, and the chances are that Israel and Hezbollah will continue their war of attrition along the border. But for Sarit Zehavi, the founder and president of ALMA, an independent research and education center specializing in Israel's security challenges, the most important thing is whether a full-fledged war happens or not that the threat of Hezbollah is handled properly. The capabilities of Hezbollah need to be dealt with. The people of Israel want to live in peace, and the people of Israel are not going anywhere. So, we will stay here, and we will continue to live here, and we will do whatever it takes to live in peace and to continue to live here," she concluded. There was a drone attack on the city of Toropets, Tver region of Russia. Local telegram channels reported on this. It is said that Ukrainian drones attacked the territory of the military unit. As a result of the kamikaze drone strikes, explosions and fires occurred in ammunition warehouses. At a warehouse in Toropets in the Tver region, the Russians stored missiles for Grads and S-400s, as well as Iskanders, and they also began storing North Korean KN-23S there. It is reported that the city population living nearby is ready to evacuate. It is difficult to evacuate some of them. Local authorities have partially evacuated residents of Toropets in Russia's Tver Oblast after a mass drone attack overnight caused a large fire, Tver Oblast Governor Igor Rudinya claimed. Photos and videos shared on Russian telegram channels showed a number of explosions and a large plume of smoke, purportedly at the site of an ammunition depot in Toropets. The Kiev Independent could not immediately verify the location of the explosions. Toropets has a population of 11,000, and is situated around 470 kilometers north of the Ukrainian border and over 370 kilometers west of Moscow. A fire started as a result of drone wreckage falling while air defense forces were repelling an attack, Rudinia claimed on Telegram at 3.30 a.m. local time, adding that the situation was under control. At 4 a.m. local time, Rudinia announced the decision to partially evacuate the population from the territory where air defense is operating and the fire is being localized as air defense continued to repel a massive attack of drones in the sky above the city. The necessary measures are being taken. The situation is under control. According to state media outlet RIA Novosti, 
the population was being evacuated to the town of Zapadnaya Dvina, 35 kilometers southeast of Toropets. Russia's defense ministry claimed that 54 Ukrainian drones had been downed overnight, but did not mention any drones downed over Tver Oblast. According to the Russian Defense Ministry's 8 a.m. report, 27 drones were downed over Kursk Oblast, 16 over Bryansk Oblast, 7 over Smolensk Oblast, 3 over Belgorod Oblast, and 1 over Oryol Oblast. Kiev did not comment on Moscow's claims, but Ukraine is known to use domestically produced drones to strike targets deep inside Russia. A previous drone attack on Tver Oblast reportedly targeted a major chemical research plant. Images and videos shared by local residents on Russian telegram channels appeared to show a large explosion on June 27 near Rudkino, home to the Redkinsky plant. At the time, Rudinia only claimed that a drone was downed over Konikovsky district in Tver Oblast, the same area in which the Redkinsky plant is located.